You're very welcome to the Woman to Woman show here on Confident Women Island with me, Roshi McClarick. Mental illness and emotional trauma is the topic of this conversation with my guest, David Ian Rogers, a shamanic Heoki empath. David is also the author of an e-book, The Awakening of the Shamanic Heoki Empath. I'm sure I'm pronouncing that wrong. David has also a background in NLP, neurolinguistic programming. David's work involves moving people's trauma, emotional and mental pain from their lives. David has worked with many sports teams and many well-known people throughout his career. David specializes and facilitating his clients in how to clear their own traumatic memories and repeated thoughts. David also offers seminars and workshops for individuals and organizations to clear their self-defeating barriers to successfully achieving their goals. David offers one-to-one ancient Andina clearing of unwanted traumatic memories and repeated memories that, if ignored, causes individuals to believe that they have a mental illness. David, you're very welcome to the Woman to Woman show here on Confident Women Island's YouTube channel. Thanks, Roisin. Thanks for inviting me. David... I'm so delighted to have you on the show, David, and um, because I've I've heard an awful lot about you throughout my own career and also through uh, different people about the work that you have done in helping people and changing people's lives for good with the work that you're doing. We're going to talk uh, in a little minute about um, your mission to end all mental illness on the planet, and you've worked out how to how to the how the mind deletes its traumatic memories for good and you say that trauma and child abuse is the root of all mental illness and as proven by 30 years of psychiatric research and the theory behind your process is found in the keys of Enoch uh, written by Jay Herker and probably again my pronunciation is wrong JJ Herker book of knowledge but before that David can you tell us what is a shamanic Heoki empath sure um the Heoka means literally great mirror so whatever people present to me if and when they actually speak to me if if indeed they're actually lying to me i will pick it up and i will mimic it back so if they say to me um for example <laughs> I, I love my wife. I'll go, yeah. And I go, he does, but you don't. Right. So I'll pick up on the intonation. I'll pick up on the, the sound, the diction. I'll pick up on anything whereby and I'll reflect it back and the other person will just laugh out loud or get angry. Either way, it doesn't matter to me because I stay with the mirror till till that person actually looks at themselves. I force people to look at themselves, basically. And, you know, and that's what everybody has to do is look at themselves, especially mm. in any healing work or, or, or dealing with any um, emotion, mental and emotional trauma as well. Yeah, that's the nature of my work. I get people to heal themselves, basically, by guiding them using a process I used and worked out to clear all my mental illness when I lost two friends in a road traffic accident over 22 and a half years ago now. Oh, I'm so sorry. No, it's okay. It was my wake-up call that and five years later when my best friend came back as a spirit guide to wake me up to making me realise that people don't die, they just move, leave the body, literally, and... uh, are in a different reality, different dimension, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. And he came back as a spirit guide for the woman I was renting a room off to save my life. Wow. Because he came back, gave me the name, his surname, his brother's name, his two sisters' names. And then through the utilizing the woman's uh, spiritual um, medium, clairvoyant services, said, you don't have to kill yourself. And she was in shock when he said that to her. And he's, She just said to me, oh, my God, you want to kill yourself? I said, yeah, I do. And he said, it's because of my mother. You saw her three weeks ago. 
And um, I said, yeah, I did see her three weeks ago. And I couldn't recall um, why I was feeling suicidal. And then, of course, he helped me remember why. She actually asked me when I went to see her, <clears throat> why did, when I said to her, how are you? She said, not good. Why did my son die and you survive? And that question repeated in this part of the brain. And he kept repeating it. It created such a bad feeling. And uh, he said to me, once you work out this mind puzzle, you'll be remembered for the next thousand years and you'll help millions, if not billions of people using this process. And you certainly to... have, you certainly have throughout your career, um, certainly help have moved people forward from having uh, any mental and emotional torment in their lives. You have really helped people move forward in their lives. And, that's a big, that's a massive gift. But as you say, you help facilitate that and you help them heal themselves. Yeah, it's a, it's God's process, really. It's not mine. Mm. It's, I worked out how the mind, the body and the spirit, which is the breath, dis dissolves the bad feeling created by the repeated thoughts about a bad memory. Right, we'll come to that in a moment. What is and the Andina uh, process? I'm, I'm pronouncing that wrong again. <laughs> no, <laughs> don't apologize. worry about it. Yeah, it's it's the the place where I felt most connected to the process. Um, and to be quite honest, I gave it that that title because of two reasons. One was the shaman Francisco in the Andes, Andean, was the place whereby he actually made me realize who I was. He called me brother. He called me Kiro. I didn't know what it was at the time. I looked it up and my wife said, oh my God, he thinks you're a shaman. And I emailed him some months later when, when I pieced it all together, what he was really saying to me. Um, and he took me through an initiation and some challenges um, online. I had to do certain things. And he says, yeah, you, um, you are the Western version of me. And it took some time to assimilate and process, as you can imagine, being a Western, um, Western male with my own cultural um, beliefs and not really thinking I would ever ever be in a position to do what I'm doing now um all those years ago that was back in 2008 when we got married and he told me all that it was a, a good few months after that that and I contact him and he gave me clarification on um the practices which are serving me now to this day Wow, and certainly that the um, in, I don't, not, I'm, I'm so confused about all this political correctness. But the Native Americans and the indigenous, indigenous Americans, they have always had such amazing healing powers, and wisdom and knowledge that mm. you know people are still talking about today. Yeah, very much so. Yeah, the the Hayoka was the the guy. There was quite a few of them over the over the centuries, really, and the, he is, the Hayoka is the oldest medicine man or woman. Wow. Yeah, and he's the Hayoka, in the, according to the Bhutan sacred text, was the guy or lady who sat um, with the Master Buddha and um, termed the phrase Laughing Buddha, where... In the text, it states quite clearly, he says, Master, have you cleared the bad feeling? And the Master Buddha replied, Heoka, I can't remember the memory, never mind the feeling. And he started to laugh because that it was that was the wow. that was where I pieced it together, what I was doing when I was there in 2012, I believe. Wow. So that's where the phrase the laugh and buzzer came from. Yeah, that's why he's known as laughing because he couldn't remember the bad feeling the thought and what he what he was mo many of my clients say 
when they get halfway through the process, when I say to them, now try and get the bad feeling back, and they go, I can't remember what we're clearing. What we, and they start laughing. So that's, um, yeah. That's, that's that process of the healing of the, the, the traumatic memories and the, and the negative thoughts and what creates the, the emotion and chemical reaction within the body. You've got it. You've got it. So, David, we're going to come into all that. What I'm, your um, aim and purpose in life is to end all mental illness on the planet. Tell us about that. Well, throughout my life, from the age of eight, where my nana said to me, if you ever meet anybody who gives you a bad feeling, you walk away. Or you get a knot in your stomach, you look at them and walk away and don't speak to them. Four years later, I met the first um, paedophile. He was a soccer coach. He's been convicted now and he's inside serving a sentence. Um, that, was, that was the beginning of the end of my uh, soccer career because as soon as I saw him, I wasn't able to get in his car. Then I met... Francis Roper, another, um, he's, he's actually dead now, um, another um, soccer coach. And again, I couldn't actually um, go off and go to a trial with him either. So that was my first encounter with the perpetrators of trauma, child abuse. Didn't think much of it other than why, why did I not go in the car? Why did I not go for the trial? Why, why, why? It was a question, but I just ignored it because I was a kid at the time. And thereafter, I carried on playing football, but I didn't take it to the extent that other uh, young lads did because I had this awareness, this subconscious awareness put there by my mother and uh, my grandmother that, Whenever I meet someone who gives me a bad feeling, I walk off. And to this day, I still, I still utilize that, that actual uh, social skill. So as I was going about my life, as growing up, I would encounter lots of instances whereby I would feel uncomfortable with adults, not say anything. And of course, as I get older, and get more comfortable with the energy that was running through me, the Hayoka energy, I would start mirroring people. First, it was my grandmother who would gurn a lot. Get in there, do this. She'd pull a face and I'd, I'd pull the face. I'd go at six, seven and eight. I'd go, no, I won't do it. And she'd chase me and she'd laugh roaring when she caught me. And I'd just look at her like this. And of course, she'd just laugh. And of course, that, that gave me the, the encouragement, really, to be me from a very early age. Um, I was a carer at a very early age. I, I used to look after and empty the commode. And it, any carers who, who's listening will know exactly what a commode is. Um, I used to clean, clean and empty that at the age of six and seven. My nana had rheumatoid arthritis. Grandfather had um, chronic bronchitis. And I was looking after them, taking meals down from the top of the street to the bottom where I'd live at the a block away and I'd walk down with the hot meal for them both. Um, and in answer to your question, the, the links to trauma and my mission was set at the age of eight, really, when I come to look back on the process I've, I've lived um, in terms of seeing the effects of trauma, the effects of child abuse with my friends who did sit in the, uh, the car with Barry Bennell and go off for a trial, and now they've, they've suffered the consequences. Um, and subconsciously, I didn't realise it until well, quite a few years ago now, but I realised when I was playing table football and Sabutio and manipulating the players there to play the game, the table football, little did I know that some years later, by clearing their trauma in football, I'd be manipulating them to actually play their A game, so to speak, by clearing the subconscious life lessons they came here to clear, which is trauma and mental illness. So, you, so from your perspective, 
which from I would say many, many, many people agree with you, is that the trauma, an awful lot of trauma and mental illness comes from the, the child abuse and adult abuse that, that people have suffered on this planet. Yeah, it's been proven the last 30 years of psychiatric re- research has proven beyond all doubt that every single mental illness on this planet is caused by trauma, a bad memory, or child abuse or adult abuse inextricably linked to every single psychological disorder, the term used by psychiatrists to describe a mental illness, for sure. And it's all hidden and it's never acted upon. And the medication and the drug industry merely treats the symptoms of the trauma which are the bad feelings. And if you indeed you were to ask a psychiatrist, they would say that the feelings cause a cause the actual bad memories. They don't. It's the bad memories cause the feelings. They've, they've switched everything so that it misleads people into understanding what the real problems are in their lives. If you ask anybody who's suffered from any psychological disorder or mental illness, they will tell you that when they're on their own, and they're thinking about the past memories that they have the bad feeling. Yeah. Unbeknown to them, that's creating the subconscious bad feeling, which you can't delete. I worked out that if you use the keys of Enoch, J.J. Hurtuk's book of knowledge, I'd been using it before I found out that those phrases that I use are actually in the keys of Enoch, which conveniently was taken out of the Old Testament, the keys of Enoch was in the Old Testament up until 1611, when they realized if they, if anybody who did what I did would read that, would work out that that's how they've enslaved us all these years. So the book of Enoch was taken out of the Bible in, yep. in 1611. 1611, yeah. Wow. Because and many people would agree with you, and I would be of the same. Um, mindset too that medication can for for, for depression or, or or mental illness it it can just numb the emotion and it can just numb people whereas you have to you have to heal the source That's of right. the trauma. Yeah it's been it's been well documented that the molecule that the antidepressants uh, target d- suppresses the stress molecule. It's the stress. So what it does, it as you say, it numbs the actual feeling of the sadness, yeah. the depression. When that wears off, it comes back twice as bad because it's just numbed it, which is then, of course, the, the reason why the doctor, the GP, suggests a higher dosage, which makes it highly addictive, which means 40 years of chronic medication and sickness. And so what you help you do is you help, you have worked out how the mind deletes traumatic memories for good. Can you talk us through that? Yeah, sure. Without, without a problem. Um, I worked out that the subconscious mind, the brain stem, locks in the memory. Okay. Right. So you've got three brains. You've got the brain stem here, which is the subconscious mind, which was the first fully formed brain in the first seven years of our lives, anybody's life, which means that any memory that's stored there is trapped in there, unless you have the key of Enoch to open it. That was my problem. How the hell do I delete memories that I can't get hold of and can't access? Because all we've got is the feelings and the memories in here. We need to, I had to work out how the hell do I, access the memories to in order to delete them so i had to find out what part of the brain deletes them i did that by asking the question what part of the brain is this this is the prefrontal lobe cortex this is the working memory in any any parlance once you once you understand that this is the working memory of any any machine you know that if it's the working memory it means it can delete it. That's what it means. If, it, if it's actually understanding all parts of the memory, then it can 
access the subconscious. That's what I deduced. And so that's what I did. So I thought to myself, how, how does it store it? How does it maintain it? Or hold on to the memory. I realized <laughs> I asked that question and during a three, three day period, I kept getting the same surreptitious responses from people from, that had apparently no connection to my asking the question, how do we, how does the mind store the memories? And it stores it by using two keys of Enoch. Interesting and it makes sense. So whenever you hear someone in conversation, they go, oh, that's interesting. Now that makes sense. And this brain locks it in there, oh. locks the memory in. Now that makes sense. Oh, how interesting you should say that. This brain goes and locks it in. Right. And then I ask myself the question, <clears throat> if that's how... If that's how it locks it in, it encodes it, if you like, and stores it, how do I retrieve it and delete it? Because mm. there's three stages of memory to encode it, store it, and then we want to retrieve it. It's the opposite to interesting and make sense. Mm -hmm. If it doesn't make sense and it's not interesting, it deletes the memory. Yeah. The say that again. That's really interesting. Just say that again. Mm. It's the golden nugget. That's the keys of Enoch. Anything that's interesting and makes sense, it stores it. Anything that is does, uninteresting, doesn't make sense, it deletes it. But Reverse. you've got to talk to the mind. You've got to talk to the mind. When you do a meditation... People are getting frustrated and not able to quieten the mind because that's what Satan wanted us to do. Get frustrated at not being able to meditate, not being able to quiet the mind. We're not here to quiet the mind. We're here to delete the chatter, the programmed social conditioned responses put there by our earliest teachers, mums, dads, brothers, sisters, etc. We're here to clear the programmed responses that are stored in the subconscious. Decluttering the rubbish in the, in the mind. Yeah, that's what we're here to do. So that we're here to end the family social conditioning. So we're here to end mental illness. That's how you end mental illness. It's very profound. Only because I asked the right questions. <laughs> Most people ask questions they don't want the answers to, like, why do I keep getting parking tickets? Why do I keep get? why do I keep attracting abusive partners? And uh, unbeknown to them, the subconscious is going, I'll show you why. And it will give them a different reason to uh, be attracted to uh, an abusive partner. Right. I ask questions I want the answer to. It happened yesterday with me and my wife. She was trying to... Um, she was asking me questions I didn't want the answer to. And she said, why are you not answering my questions? I said, because <laughs> it's not going to work. And the moment it did work, she went, why did that work? Without going into the details of it. I said, because I asked the question which would provide me with the answer. And she, she went, she just goes, <laughs> I get it now. <laughs> yeah, funny. Yeah, it is. You also say that, and we'll, we'll, we'll talk about this, that the trauma and child abuse is the root cause of all mental illness. And we've, we've just spoken about that. Now, here in Ireland, we've had an awful lot of the child abuse with, um, with, with the Catholic Church and with the Madeline sisters and throughout an awful lot more, but we won't go into it. So what would your message be to the Irish people and especially here in Ireland, Competent Women Ireland uh, YouTube um, audience, how do we first of all get to that point where we know that throughout our history, like 
But we think of the Madeline sisters, the, the, the sexual abuse within the Catholic Church, within the educational systems and boarding schools and things like that. And sports as well, within sports, and it's everywhere. It's, it's prevalent. It's prevalent. Um, how, do, what, how do we start to heal that um, mental illness and the, the trauma of the mental and emotional abuse and physical abuse? A very poignant question, Roshan. It's very, very poignant because you've got to want to be well. You've got to be aware that you have a problem. Most people think that their problems are unsolvable because they've been conditioned to believe that drugs or or medication or drink or some other kind of um, intoxicant outside of them is the only way to displace it or numb it for a period of time. So in answer to your question, there's two, there's two conditions to working with this process that I use. And that is one, you've got to know you need help. Most people know they need help. They may not admit it, but the, the major condition is that they've got to want to be well. They've got to, they've, their soul wants to be well. Not everybody has come here to be well. Some people, no matter how many times they see a video, will go of me clearing it. And then they've asked that person and contacted them, will still not believe that they're healed because their soul has contracted with them, with that body to not heal this lifetime for various reasons. I get umpteen emails a day saying, David, will you help me daughter? Will you help me granddaughter? Will you help me husband? Will you help me? And I'll go, just ask them this one question. Do you want to be well and healed of all your issues? Yes or no? I mean, because they have to have, as you say, it's a contract with the soul that they have to want and know that they they can be healed, and you can remove the the the, the memories and the thoughts related to the trauma, and they have to believe that they are worthy of that healing as well. Yeah, yeah, very much. Well, not so much worthy. I think. I think it's more to do with. Um, the soul contract with me my once I fulfilled if you can picture the scene there was one particular um, I'll give you one particular example which is it it's graphic um, I was working with this A-lister from Hollywood that um, Charlie Ward referred me to and we cleared all his, his trauma, apart from one thing. He said, you'll never clear this. I said, let's give it a bash. He said, it's the two-year-old children that have been abused. He said, what about those? He said, you can't, you can't help them. I said, you can. Only the ones that want it. He said, he said that's terrible. And I said, it's great, isn't it? They chose to be abused. He went. No, they didn't. There are only two. I said, yes, they did. Picture the scene two years earlier. He said, what do you mean? I said, picture the scene. There's a guy there in heaven going, we've got a problem on Earth. We need to evidence SRA on the planet. Earth, satanic ritual abuse. We're running out of children who will go down and evidence the evil. Any takers, and they're all going, and he's going, you miserable buggers. Why don't you want to go down there? You're going to help the planet. And, it, and he said, can I incentivize you? There's a guy down there with a funny rubbery face, steady on Roshi. Guy down there with a funny rubbery face, with a funny hairdo. He's worked out how the mind deletes all bad memories. You'll be heroes. Any takers now? Okay, slow down. And, of course, the A-lister went from wanting to do some serious harm to himself to wanting to kiss me and say thanks very much so we cleared his anger and rage at that as well and of course um the rest is history now in terms of the revelation of 
the stuff that's coming out, all we're waiting for now is the the mainstream media to either go or to be exposed as to to be the uh, the perpetrators and the collaborators with with evil of, that have kept all this going for all these years. Um. So, in answer to your question in relation to the message to the people of Ireland, it's the message to the to the people all over the world. It's endemic. They've been they've been doing this for a very 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 long time. They've been in charge. They got here first, so to speak. They worked out. They worked out how the mind works. They kept the the work of the Hayoka hidden. Um, and I guess my job now is to get the message out that to every everybody who wants to be well to use this process and heal themselves by my guidance. Wow. And, you know, there's so much pain and hurt in the world. And because there has been so much um, child abuse, sexual abuse, and, um, and other things, uh, which we'll, we won't go into for this part, but we'll let the audience uh, see, through the, see through the lines, especially with what's happening and all the children and human trafficking and things, and even more horrific evil things like that that is going on and has gone on. And... Um, and it has been well known. We've all been, we've all known about, it. we've all talked about it, we've all whispered about it, we've all been afraid to talk about it. But it's as it will all come out in the future. I have no doubt on that, and neither does anybody else have any doubt. Um, especially what's happened in here in Ireland, um, it's coming, it has come out over the years. And um, when you think about it, it was the most trusted people who we trusted within society that actually were involved with it and covered it all up. And the, the, so we, now it's about that healing of that trauma, but where you're going to even come in even more further and be so much in demand in, when people start realising what has happened and that there is help and there is ways of releasing that trauma and deleting the memories. Hmm. It's instantaneous as well. Every client will tell you, one minute I guide them to the memory, without them thinking they go to the memory i just ask them to repeat allow the mind to just repeat what they were thinking and saying in that memory for the last time they have the bad feeling they have the anxiety they have the suicidal feeling they have the betrayed feeling they have the cheated feeling they have the jealous feeling they have the whatever feeling it is and then i do the process as we'll demonstrate shortly with a random uh, caller and what what you'll what they will experience, what the random caller will experience is them not being able to get the same feeling they had seconds earlier, just before the, the uh, final bit of the process, which is the diaphragmatic breathing, just the breathing in through the nose, <laughs> hold it at the top of the breath, keeping the mouth closed, and then <sighs> exhale into the belly. So it is allowing the Holy Spirit, our breath is the Holy Spirit. We're the omnipotent power. That's what Satan and evil has been trying to keep secret. That's the God energy within every body. The breath. Because that's the last thing we do on this planet is our last breath. And that's how people know whether we have passed on and passed over is because of the last breath. Hmm. And anyone who is um, who has experience of, especially in the medical profession, or anybody who's who's been with people before they pass over, they always say, you know, the last breath, the death rat, the breath rattle, the death rattle with the last breath. You've got it. You've got it. Well, that's powerful. Hmm. And you know, when you think about the breath, many of us are not breathing properly. The okay. shallow breathing. Mm. which causes asthma and many, many um, lung issues and respiratory issues because we're not breathing in life. That's right. And if we learn how to breathe 
properly with intention as well of knowing what the power of breath and breath work is, that it will heal an awful lot of people's emotional trauma. You got it. That's the literal meaning of the shamanic aspect of the shamanic Aoka process. The shamanic bit is using clear, conscious intent, using the breath to dissolve the bad feeling created by the conscious mind recalling the bad memories. Once the bad memories have been shifted from subconscious to conscious mind, and it creates within the limbics, limbic brain, if you like, is the, the brain in between the conscious mind, the prefrontal lobe cortex, and the brain stem, the subconscious mind. And once we repeat the thoughts from the traumatic memory and it creates the live connection in the central nervous system, which creates the bad feeling called anxiety, depression, suicidal thoughts, addictive cravings, whatever it is that we have created by just repeating the subconscious responses to those memories, that's how we delete it, by just asking the mind's permission. Do you want to delete those bad feelings, memories and thoughts for good? Yes or no? Once I get, some people say no. Really? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Because they have to hold I, on to that drama, do they? That well, they're invested in the story. Happen. Yes. Yes. Or, or it could be an entity or an intrusion. Right. To, yeah. I've had many an occasion where they go, what? I, I can't believe this day that they'll, they'll say to me, they're saying you're evil. Nothing you, you do makes sense. And I'll go, do you want to delete it? Yes or no? Oh, my God, they're trying to tell me to say no. Yes. I'm like, good. And then I do the next bit. Does this make sense? And I do make a random noise. <clears throat> Does that make sense? Yes or no? And they go, oh, yes. And I'll go, it's the entity speaking. And they go, what? What, is, what do you mean? I said, Does this make sense? <clears throat> Yes or no? And they go, oh, he's trying to tell me now. They're aware there's an entity. He's trying to tell me to say, yes, it does make sense. That means it holds on to the memory. If it doesn't, if it says no, it lets go of holding on to the bad feeling created by those repeated thoughts. So talk to us about the, the and then we'll go, you're going to do a, um, a clearing. So let's just remind the, the, the audience too about the power of thoughts, the power of the language that we're using in our self-talk and it also in, in, in holding on to the memories in the trauma, mm. the words, the language, the emotions associated with the trauma and how it stays in the physical body as well. Oh, without a shadow of a doubt. Yeah, I've got loads of examples of that. Um, I'll give an example of one client came to me um, with the trauma of being abused and they recounted the story and then they said, and I said, do you want to delete that? And they went, no. And I went, oh, why is that? Because it's who I am. So I said, oh, and I had to talk. And what I'm doing there I'm actually asking a question to the hurt little boy or girl, depending on, yeah? Because that's, that's the language of the mind. That's how it's told the story. The little boy, the little girl, the hurt little boy is invested in it. If I delete it, who am I? What will I become? There's a fear for... A few people that I've worked with in relation to that, not, not a great many, I can assure you, when they've got the bad feeling, they want to get rid of it. But a lot of, um, a lot of the time, they'll question it in varying, various aspects of the story. And it's my job to make sure that I give them a reason as to why they should get rid of it, so to speak. Because a lot of a lot of people, not all, but some people, uh, their identity is attached to the story. Yeah, I've lost my mother. If I lose, if I lose the bad feeling in relation to my mother, does it mean I won't get upset about her passing? And I said, 
why do you want to get upset about her passing? Your mother wouldn't want you to be in pain. And they go, oh, oh, yeah. It doesn't mean you don't love your mother because you're no longer in pain over her passing. It means you've healed. The electromagnetic connection of the repeated thoughts of, but my mum died like this, my mum died like this. The repeated thought about what happened. She died like this, she died like this. And that creates the bad feeling. Nothing to do with mum who died 20 odd years ago. It's nothing to do with it. It's the repeated thought in here, trapped in here. She died like this. It's so cruel. It's so cruel. It's so that creates the bad feeling, the repeated thought. And that is what I worked out. And with the, the, the traumatic memories and thoughts and emotions, which has a chemical biological reaction within the body, you're also healing the body because you're healing the mind, which also then helps heal all the physical um, ailments and dis dis-ease within the body. Yeah, it's all created by the mind. The so lady came to see me, Louise, and she was shaking like this. And she said to me, I went through a, a windscreen in a car accident five years ago and she tried everything 51 minutes later five traumas later it stopped we just access the memories that were causing the shaking and what then you were we're going to go to a you're going to give us um a, a give a random clearing uh, hmm. in, in a moment but that also goes back is what you're going to teach us too is the breath because when we hold on to them traumatic memories and we have negative and or any thought processes to the trauma, we don't breathe. We constrict, constrict our breathing. Yeah. That's and, how it keeps it in. That's how it keeps it in. And so therefore, once you, this is amazing. I think this is amazing. Once you, you facilitate that, the people, and you, as you say, they heal themselves. You facilitate that. Once they do that, they start breathing in life again. That's the literal meaning of the Holy Spirit. The omnipotent, invisible power of the Holy Spirit is your breath. That's the literal meaning. Before the people who wanted to mislead the people into believing they're not worthy, not good enough, they're full of... Um, judgments about the opposite sex made man more allegedly more important and powerful in the indoctrination in the bible it's all part of that evil process David, we are the holy spirit it's yeah. us it's the breath because you know uh, you know if you know religion is it's another thing you know but have been spiritual is a, 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 you know, I would say you're, you're a spiritual person, you're not religious, but just like myself, it's about that spiritual connection. And we all talk about our, our, our spirit and our soul, which are two different, you, there's lines of thought that there's two different things. I actually think that too, because with the breath is related to the spirit and the soul. Same things. And... Uh, that is the spirit. If you think as a, as a mother, you know, and I'm sure that the, when, when my, 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 my first daughter, Naomi, was delivered, and I, I still have that vivid memory, I went, oh, my God, this is a real human being. How did she breathe inside my womb? You know, and then they come out breathing, gasping. Babies come out gasping for air, and that crying helps that breathing and that gasping for air. Right. The breath. I have a completely different, after speaking to you this morning, many different perceptions, but the breath, the power of breathing and breathing properly with intention. Yeah. David, um, you, 
going to I'm going to put you on full screen and you're going to give us a um a clearing for anybody who is watching or listening to this so I'd just like to give a, a disclaimer that you no know, if you are driving or while you're listening to this podcast or doing anything make sure that you are sitting down somewhere and relaxed and that you're in a safe environment where you're not driving or using machinery or cooking the dinner or changing the baby's nappy or anything else like that so just if you're doing this part save it until you are somewhere where you can sit down and um absorb everything and and make um, them aware roshin as well make them aware that they won't have to tell me any content it's no. closed content yeah and the story the doesn't matter it does it really when you're healing the story does not matter it's the intention and and uh, and it's the intention of just um i would say acknowledging as you say everything's in reverse so acknowledging something happened did and you're going to teach us all through that but i love that that everything is reverse and you actually say tell us about that before that you were born reverse and you do things in reverse yeah, I, was tell born us about, I think that's lovely <laughs> i was born breach um <laughs> and as a child, as a baby, um, I did everything backwards. That's what it means. So when, when, any, when anybody was around me, when anybody was, I'd find out what their intentions were by just mimicking who they were and what they were behaving like. And they, they would either start laughing or they'd get angry at me just mimicking them, which was the first sign that, because that's the, the backward things to do. Because when, when someone's in pain or when someone's telling you a story, you don't get somebody mimicking and reflecting the very thing and the very gestures and behaviours back to someone. When they laugh, it means they're lying. They just laugh out loud at them trying to convince you of something that's not true. They're not laughing at me mimicking they're laughing at themselves the mind is laughing at me not falling for what they're saying i do it all the time with my wife she's in hysterics most of the time <laughs> but when she's trying to get me to do something that she knows i don't want to do she said this is not working she'll say and i go yes i know you'll have to do it yourself and she's so funny <laughs> she to do it so funny as you can probably imagine from the age of six, I was asked to care for others. Yeah. So I'm very much aware as to when someone's asking me to do something to help them, as opposed to ask them to do something because they can't be bothered themselves, which is what sometimes my gran and nana, my nana would do. Go in there, David, and get me a cup of tea. And I'd go, no. Get in there, she'd say. Get in there. And, do it. and I'd go, No. And she'd chase me in there and I'd get to the, the kettle and she'd go and she'd just burst out laughing. <laughs> and then I'd just walk out. No, you can do it. Look, you're coming in now. And, and that's what I was like. And that's, that's what I mean by backwards. I'd get, to the, I'd get to the root intention behind what people were asking of me. Yeah. A lot of people are very uncomfortable around me. A lot of people love being around children, animals, can't get rid of them. Do you know, they, they, they're <laughs> always wanting to play. I, I coach a soccer team. I used to coach an under nines, under 12s, under 15s, under 17s, under 18s. But the, the difficulties um, are totally different in relation to the dynamics with an under 18s team as opposed to an under nines. They're a lot more. A lot more honest, should we say? And look, my cat boots just came in. See, <laughs> they can sense. They can sense. Can people? Oh yeah, yeah. And David, before we start going into the clean, I just want to uh, remind our listeners: you, you've been talking about your beautiful wife. Your wife is also on the channel with two videos, Elaine. Um, Rogers and uh, with with the frequency, the music of, of frequency and changing the frequency. So I would love to have interviewed the two of you together because there's another story there and another 
there's something I would love to really get into because you said something really beautiful the other day when I was on the phone to you. <laughs> and you, you, somebody asked you, what was the secret of your successful, happy marriage? And you said, she is the female version of me. Yes, and I thought yes. that was just so beautiful that I actually cried at that. That was just so beautiful. Yeah. Well, we're, we're again, we're socially conditioned and programmed subconsciously to look for opposites or look for people who are confident because I'm not confident or we, we subconsciously, because we think we're incomplete. If you, if you were a fly on the wall in the last 14 years, you would know it was no plain sailing. No. It's, it's, it's Elise is the, the, the opposite of me she, in the sense that um, in many, many ways, but in, in all the other ways that is not the opposite, she's the closest version of me in another person on this planet. And after an hour, I knew I had to marry her. I had a panic attack, having never conceived of the idea for the previous 42 years. I had had five relationships that lasted three or four years, possibly five years in some instances. And then it just, it just, it, we just parted with Elise. I knew after an hour, having never asked anybody out in 42 years or 20 odd years in my adult life, um, of asking anybody out. And at, within an hour, I knew I had a panic attack upstairs in the mutual friend's house whose son I used to teach math to. After an hour thinking, oh my God, I'm going to have to ask it out. It took me three weeks to pluck up the courage. And then within an hour of our first date, I said to her, I could marry her and have children with you. And she said, oh my God, I feel the same way. And we both went, oh my God, we sound like a pair of stalkers. <laughs> and we laughed out loud. It, what we only thought would last an hour of, of a date lasted nine hours. And we're, wow. oh, it just went on and on and on. The rest and of here you are. Time. Yeah, she was, she was, Elise was traumatized, and um, with this process, I cleared the, the blocked throat chakra, which then caused her to um, want to sing again. And, um, and then she wrote nine tracks, and she found out that those nine tracks are the nine energy centers in and outside of the body, the seven inside the body, and the, the two, uh, one above and one below. Um, the human body is the nine energy centers that Leonardo da Vinci um, cleared himself using the, the frequencies, the solfeggio tones, which is to which he's referring to, um, whereby he used the churches and the organs to play up. And that's why they wanted to close down the churches, because the vibrations and the churches, if you know anything about the Tartarians and the empires there, they were the energy portals. And when the organs piped up, they would literally clear the energy centers of the patrons going into the, uh, the worshippers going into the churches. Wow. And that's why he was perceived as the complete man, because his third eye was wide open. So when he was working out and going into other dimensions, he saw... Uh, the invention of the helicopter in another dimension and brought it back to this one. And he was the guy who brought back a lot of uh, mathematical um, information. And of course, um, he was able to actually uh, do the, uh, the, the drawings and the paintings. And that's why he was seen as the complete man because he used the solfeggio tones to clear his energy blocked chakras in the, in the body. Wow. Yeah. Well, I must have interviewed you and Elise together. I think that would be an amazing combination and energy of the two of you together for, for many reasons. We'll keep that one. But um, and I, I think, you know, gosh, I, I would actually pay you to come uh, to a conference uh, if you two were guest speakers as well. I, I think that would be Thank so you. powerful to see you both working together, and, you know, because you both work so brilliantly in your own expertise separately, but to have you both together working together would be amazing. It's comical as well because we're we're so in each other's faces. It's funny <laughs> because yeah, that wasn't that wasn't the case when we first because we've got a lot of we did have a lot of past life trauma together because we've come here trying to do this before. Oh. I'll be thinking something and she'll say 
for, for instance, we was um, in Cusco on the day of our arrival, three days before our um, marriage on the 21st of May, 2008. And I was sat in this greasy spoon cafe Al fresco with the doors open and I'm looking at these apartments opposite and I'm in my mind, I'm going, I've lived there. I'm sure that's familiar, that building there. I'm thinking that she says, we lived over there. The next thing <laughs> she said, we lived over there. You were the woman and I was the man and you run off with somebody else. I said, right. <laughs> and I jokingly said, well, that's a bloody woman for you. And she said, she's cracking me down the head. And she did, that's what it's been like for 14 years. Uh-huh. Well, I think oh, you're it's... both lovely. Mm. You're just two beautiful human beings. And it's, it's, and it's been a really pleasure speaking to you today because, you know, the work that you do and is what you say is, is, is so powerful. And do you know what else? Now, I'm not simplifying anything. It's a very simple process. It's so simple that people say, oh, it couldn't work. But you see, a lot of therapists and a lot of healers, they make things so difficult when really... To heal is a very simple process. And it's, just, it's, it's the sole contract with you. Yes, I would like you to help me. I trust you. And um, yes, I'm ready to be healed. Mm. Have we got, a, have we got a, a random viewer? Pushing? Have we got we haven't got a random viewer. But let's, let's uh, just put it out there that anybody watching this will, have the, um, will be able to connect and do this for you. I'm going to put you on full screen. Bear with me because I'm technologically blind. So bear with me. Speak of you. There you go, David. Let okay. hold it over to you. Okay. Okay. Whoever is watching, um, without thinking just allow whatever memories that really trouble you the most to come to mind now without thinking, go blank in the mind. And as the mind will act like a GPS system, it will go straight to that particular memory, that traumatic memory that you thought up until now, there's no way I'll be able to clear it. And just allow the mind to just tell you the story. Just allow it to repeat the same thoughts and memories and sayings that you've always said when those memories come to mind. And then just start to become aware of the feeling that you always get when you have recalled that, that memory subconsciously. But this time we're doing it consciously. Now, having recognized the bad feeling that you've got now, I'm going to ask you a question. Those feelings created by all the thoughts and all the memories that have always created those feelings up until now, would you like to delete them, yes or no? Yes. If you said yes, okay. Does this make sense? <laughs> Ding! <laughs> Does any of that nonsense make any sense? Yes or no? Yes. I know that's the problem. Say no. It's holding on to it. That's why this process works, because we're talking to a machine. Okay. Machine. <laughs> you ready? Okay. I'll yeah. ask again. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yes or no? No. Good. Now you're out of the story, Roisin. I know you've actually been, you've gone to a memory, haven't you? Yeah, I did, yeah. I know you did. Right. Okay. That's yeah. how I know because the mind's going, don't say, don't say no, it doesn't make sense. Say yes, I hold on to this. This is your trauma. This is who you are. It's not who you are. It's the story you came here to experience, to delete, to ascend in the body, to literally ascend into the body into your heart space and then to go to any dimension you want thereafter, if you so choose. You said yes and no to these questions. Hand on the belly, Roisin, hand on the belly. The lower abdomen, if you're medically trained, which is the belly button. And keeping the mouth closed, just follow my rhythm of diaphragmatic breathing. So just breathe in from it through the nose. Hold it there. Keeping the mouth closed. Hold it there. Keeping the mouth closed, exhale 
that air into the belly now like this. Mm. Perfect. Keeping the mouth closed, follow my rhythm of diaphragmatic breathing. Mm. Hold it there. Mouth closed at all times. No air in or out of the mouth. Mm. And again. Mm. Oh, she. Yes. Has the bad feeling gone? The bad feeling and the physical reaction in my heart, my left lung and down my arm has completely gone. Yeah. That's the magical, invisible, omnipotent power of the Holy Spirit. Now try and get it back. Good luck with that. Try and get any of those feelings back. You'll be able to go to the memories. The, the memories will be very perforated. They'll be very um, mottled. You won't be able to see them clearly, but go to those memories now and repeat just to test it as if you sat on your own. Just repeat those same thoughts and, and memories. You know what I have, love? That's it. That's how I know you've cleared it because the mind has to go to the healthy view. Straight away, it'll just go, oh, I'm okay. Yeah. Oh, I'm just full of love here instead of what I had before. That's how you know it's gone. If ever proof were needed. Wow, David, that is amazing. Hmm. That is amazing. So in answer to your question you asked earlier, the message to the people of Ireland who've been abused, the message to the people of the world who've all been abused, whether there are as old as two, they can do this process. David, you know, your reputation of being so powerful in, and so in purpose and with the right intention is, 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 is amazing. And you, if that comes across today, the sincerity, the realness, and the authenticness of what you do and the why of what you do. And you and even that, my whole body feels different. When I thought about that memory, oh my God, I felt so heavy. I felt my, I, I, my vibrations had completely dropped and the pain and the heaviness in my heart and my left lung and right the way down, even down to here, was so heavy and so painful that I was going to cough and do everything else and panic, have a panic attack. Yeah. But I feel so much lighter now. I mean... Oh, you will do. It's gone. You'll never get yeah. it back. You'll never get it back. That's the, that, for me, is the profound bit because I've been doing this 17 and a half years and I still go, crikey, I can't believe it's still gone. I still, my own memories of seeing the two uh, dead bodies on the road. I... On that night, every time I closed my eyes, I had to open them because I kept seeing the two dead bodies. It was so painful. I, I just still, I'm in a state of incredulity, disbelief that that pain, which was so painful, so painful, is gone. It's incredible. Yeah. And you and the breath. I mean, that is so powerful. My cat's hairs are going everywhere. <laughs> the <laughs> um, yeah, they're still flying around. Um, <laughs> or maybe that's angel angels uh, coming down and telling us, <laughs> you know, that the, the work has, they're doing their work through you and through. And it's amazing too, David. If and I know there will be people listening to this and watching this and would like to get in contact with you. Mm. How can people get in contact with you? Sure. It's my website and my email. Um, you book in through my email address because I have to 
liaise with each person individually. I have to make sure they're ready. Um, so it's David Ian Rogers at gmail.com or contact at David Ian Rogers dot com. Um, and I'll put the description, uh, the links the in the link. description below. Yeah. And David, we're going to have you uh, hopefully uh, have you on a lot more talking about different issues. But also, uh, well, I I'm really looking forward to interviewing you and your beautiful wife, Elaise. Uh, and because um, that would be another whole uh, issue. And I just think, you know, it, you have a great relationship. In the, and as, as LA says, frequencies and vibrations between you. And when you're both, when you're talking together, wow, because I spoke speaking to the two of you the other day on the phone. And wow, the energy was just amazing. Yeah, it is. It is. It, it's, it's divine, really, how we met. I'll not spoil that particular interview, no. but it friends in our lives before we connected was so insistent. We went to this particular Reiki night at a mutual friend's house whose son I used to teach maths to. It's quite divine. And the, and the, and the dreams I had on the same night in relation to my Nana coming to me saying, this is the lady you need to ask out and marry. So yes, yeah. yeah. That was, nine, that, that was the, the most terrifying dream I've ever had in my life. <laughs> like, oh my God, I'm going to get married. Oh, See, the power of love from your grandmother is she's still with you, she's still connected, and she still wants the best for you. Oh, yeah. The Here's, divine feminine at work. This is what I saw on that night. Wow. Wow. In that outfit, and that was our wedding day. Really? Yeah. In a place called Morai. M O R A Y. Where was that? In in Peru, in the Andes, three and a half thousand feet up the Andes. That was a that was one of the three places we went to the Sacred Valley, Morai, and Chin Chintiro. They were the three last remaining sacred sites of the last remaining um andean community which is the willock w i l l o q willock community that's the last remaining andean community in the andes the wow. willock community mm. well david Back in 2008 2008 mm. and this is 2022 wow it's coming to the end uh, incredible David, it has been an absolute pleasure speaking to you. And thank you yes. so much for healing that trauma from me. And you I, did I, it I yourself, Roisin. You did it yourself. I've been looking to, for years to heal that particular trauma. Um, for years. And, um, and thank you. Thank you so much, you know, for you're my welcome. heart. Thank you for that. And you're thank welcome. you for the work that you are doing that you're not talking about and you don't talk about. Thank you for that work. You're welcome. And what you you're do. Welcome. And um, if anybody, I, and I sincerely mean this with, with the greatest intention and purpose and pure heart, if you have a trauma, uh, whether it's child abuse, adult abuse, any kind of uh, trauma, physical trauma, emotional, mental trauma, and you would sincerely like to release yourself from that trauma, please. Or addiction. Addiction. Or addiction. Yes, because that was something we didn't touch on. Addiction as well, because that seems to be a pattern from trauma, doesn't it? Is the addiction to alcohol or drugs or even gambling or something or food to actually numb, numb out the trauma. That's yes. another conversation, David. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Yeah, it is. David Ian Rogers, thank you so much indeed. Thank you, Roshin. Thank, thank you. Thank you.